I'd now like to call this February 2nd, 2012 Cookville City Council meeting to order. Can we get a roll call, please? Councilman Anderson. Present. Councilman Woodford. Present. Mayor Swallows. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Councilman Albright. Here. Four present, one absent. Thank you. Would everyone please stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Consider approval of agenda as presented. The changes to the to the we agenda. Have no changes. All right. Do we have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. All right, I'll vote. Four yes votes, motion carries. All right, consider approval of minutes of the last council meeting held January 19th, 2012. Do I have a motion for approval of the, of the minutes? So Seven. moved. Second. All right, I'll vote. Four yes votes, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item three, consider on second and final reading ordinance 11-12-22, rezoning 1710 White Road from CG General Commercial to RS10, single family residential, and rezoning a portion of the adjoining property from RS10, single family residential, to CG General Commercial. Sponsors, Mr. James Mills. Mr. Mayor and council members, the properties proposed for rezoning are depicted on the screen. Here's an aerial view. And the current zoning, the two tracks involved are a small triangular piece here and a larger piece here. Um, the intent here in this rezoning is to allow the uh, property owner to subdivide off a house which is located in the commercial zone portion of this larger track and to combine the portion of the commercial, the larger track with the smaller track. This portion would be rezoned to RS10, the house would be, and that's, that portion would be re rezoned to, again to uh, RS10 and then this small remaining sliver of this triangle track would be combined into this larger piece and it would go to CG. Um, there were no uh, have been no calls or comments since first reading. Thank you, Mr. Mills. A motion for approval. So moved. Second. <clears throat> questions, comments from the council? Any questions, comments from the audience? Seeing none, I'll vote. Four yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mills. All right. On to the consent agenda. <clears throat> Item four, set a date, March 1st, 2012. For a public hearing on Ordinance 12201, rezoning 423 North Peachtree Avenue from MS Medical Services to UNV University. Request submitted by Cookville Regional. Item 5, consider awarding bids for wire and transformers from the Electric Department. Uh, and item 6, consider awarding bids for asphalt milling, paving, asphalt, and mineral aggregate six month contract from the Public Works Department. Do we have a motion for so approval? Moved. Second. Any questions, comments from the council? Any from the audience? All right, seeing none, I'll vote. Four yes votes, motion carries. All right, on to, on to new business. Uh, item seven, consider resolution 120203, amending the city charter, city charter, charter article 14, section 1405, personal interest sponsors, Mr. Jim Shipley. Mayor and Council, over the years, uh, we've had issues with this section of our charter, and the, the word in, the, in that section that gives us the problem is the word employee. Uh, it says that any local business that's owned by an employee or an employee's family, uh, even, that employee, even though that employee has no influence over that purchase or the department making the purchase, doesn't vote on it or anything, uh, that would violate this provision of the charter. And what I'm proposing tonight is that we eliminate this wording in this section and just adopt uh, state law. There are two sections of state law uh, that apply. One is 12-4-101 and the other is 654-107. 
In 12-4101, it says it is unlawful for any officer, committee member, director, or other person whose duty it is to vote for, let out, overlook, or in any manner to superintend any work or any contract in which any municipal corporation, and it named off all these different entities, uh, shall or may be interested to be directly interested in any such contract. And in 654.107, says no person holding office under any municipal corporation shall during the time for which the person was elected or appointed be capable of contracting with any such corporation for the performance of any work that is to be paid for out of the treasury. So I think state law covers everything that our current charter covers but it does not go as deep as the rank and file employee and so that's what I would like uh, that I'm asking you to approve tonight is this resolution that we would send to the state legislature to amend our charter to just adopt those two sections of Tennessee state law thank you mr. Shipley Do I have a motion for approval so moved second All right, any questions comments from the council um, curious have there been problems with this in the past uh, I mean as far as as the employee relationship there yes there has and, and sometimes we probably violate this code section and don't this charter section and don't even know it uh, a secretary in one department say leisure services for example her husband owns a park store I'm just using he doesn't but I'm just using that as an example somebody in the electric department needs to go buy an auto part and he goes to that park store to buy the part unbeknownst to him he's violated that and then once we see that you know if we're aware of it then we have to say well you can't shop there anymore you don't have to go somewhere else okay. and there have there are, there have been occasions where it actually could cost the taxpayers more money or we'd have to go outside the city to make the purchase so uh, I, did, I, I don't understand why that why it went as deep as employee right well I think it makes sense to make it um, be in line with what the state law is and makes it cleaner <coughs> and easier to deal with and you know as many employees as there are in the city of Cookville I could see very easily how <coughs> somebody would know that that store belonged to the wife of you know whatever so I and I definitely don't want us spending more money by sending people out of town to buy something that they can buy in town you know let's keep our money here in Cookville yeah with as many employees as the city has 400 plus not everybody knows everybody so uh, this must have been written a long long time ago when we were much well smaller. probably in the 1960s when the charter was adopted correct uh, of course when when we know when we know that there is that that potential conflict we're always going to make sure that that's we're getting the best price or the best service or whatever that we're going for but I don't really think it's fair for somebody that owns a local business just because their wife works here at the city or their husband works here at the city to be totally locked out of doing business with the city I agree as long as it's fair and equitable to everybody I also agree with that I agree, I agree too <coughs> all right just just be clear I guess we want to point out that this just really changes the employee portion of that and so any officer or elected official or director or anyone uh, in the city still has the same conflict of interest that they have to abide by so just wanted to clarify that correct any any other questions any comments from the audience all right seeing none all vote four yes votes motion carries all right item eight <clears throat> consider approval of declaration of protective covenants and restrictive covenants running with land for the Highlands Industrial Business Park sponsors Mr. Jim Shipley this uh, these covenants for the new business park uh, are something that really have been worked on for I guess a couple of years and lately uh, Mr. Joe Albright representing the chamber Melinda Kiefer and I and Greg Brown and James Mills uh, have all been through these and tried to uh, pair them down to where they kind of make sense we want to have a really nice business park uh, we don't want some old ugly steel building out there of course I've always said 
somebody comes in offering 500 jobs at $15 an hour, we'll say, well, sure. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let me go through real quickly what, uh, what I consider to be the, the main points. There's a, quite a few prohibited uses uh, in the park, residential dwellings, uh, commercial in, in, incineration, junkyards, body or fender shops, wrecking and salvage yards, rubbish and garbage, treatment of hazardous toxic radio, radioactive waste, mining, rock quarry drilling, uh, mobile or modular home sales, many warehouses, uh, wireless communication tower structures, billboards, cemeteries or mortuaries, or other activities that the developer, which is the city, and the county in its sole discretion, discretion deems incompatible with the goals of the park. Uh, all raw materials and equipment shall be stored completely in, in enclosed buildings or shall otherwise be completely screened. Signs shall only contain the business name and or logo. They have to be indirectly illuminated and shall not be lighted from within unless it's specifically approved and that each business shall have no more than one freestanding monument type sign per street frontage. There'll be no flashing, moving, or temporary intermittently lighted signs. Pole signs are prohibited, and all outdoor wiring shall be underground, uh, with the exception of the couple electrics main line, which was going to cost us millions of dollars, so we couldn't do that. Uh, and all uh, cable TV, telephone, internet, et cetera, shall surface. In other words, it has to be underground, but it has to surface every now and then. When it does, it has to go into a vault at ground level. And th that's some language that we added today. Uh, got one more slide, I think, James. Yeah, this is it. Uh, no building shall be constructed with wood framing. Uh, exterior walls should be finished with natural stone, brick, or manufactured stone, split face, spit, I'll get out, get it out in a minute, split face block or rib block, stucco finished flat wall panel, foam insulated flat panel, with fiber stone, precast concrete panels, or tilt up concrete panels. And we added this language today through, uh, by Mr. Greg Brown of Public Works, that no grading is allowed within the floodplain without city approval. And I think that covers uh, most of what we have in the covenants. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Shipley. <coughs> a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Any questions from council, comments? Well, um, I just was looking over it, and I think it's great that we're going to encourage it to be pedestrian and cyclist friendly. And um, the whole point behind all of this is to make it a pleasant place to see and be at and also to look nice from the interstate as people pass by. And that's always important, I think. I would encourage uh, everybody to go out there and, and look at the progress that's being made. Uh, Great. You can pretty well... You can start to see what the bridge is going to look like and uh, that goes over the floodplain. It is coming along and it's supposed to be ahead of schedule if it'll just quit raining. So. I think this helps us to create an environment that will be attractive to people uh, to attract jobs to our city. And uh, without this, uh, we would be very behind everybody uh, that's out there. And this is something that, that we've needed for a long time. and. It's exciting to see it all come together. Again, there are a lot more restrictions than what he covered, but he just hit the high point. So, uh, and that's obviously for public record if anybody wanted to see exactly what all is included in that. Comments or questions? Anything from the audience? Okay. We're on item eight. I didn't hear the conversation, so I'm go I'm good with it, but Okay. All right. All vote. 
Four yes vo votes, one abstained. Motion carries. All right, on to item nine. Consider approval of land use restri restrictions for wetland mitigation at the Highlands Industrial Business Park. Sponsor is Mr. Greg Brown. Mayor and Council, um, part of the construction of the road, uh, some wetlands were destroyed. Uh, as part of our permits with the Corps of Engineers and the uh, Department of Environment and Conservation, we're required to mitigate that. The site outlined in red, uh, it's 5.03 acres. Uh, that's also within the floodplain that you can see the, the shaded area. That's the, the Cane Creek floodplain. We're locating that in there where we're going to create hopefully five acres of, of wetlands to mitigate that. And uh, the, the core and the TDEC has required us to place a deed restriction on this parcel to ensure that nobody else later on destroys the wetlands that we've created to mitigate. So that's why we're, we're asking for the, the deed restriction on this. I'd request your approval. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions from the <coughs> council? Comments? Mr. Brown, will that be a pond-like area, or will it just be a no, wetland? It'll be a wetland. Okay. Just be a marshy area. We'll be planting some different trees in there. Uh, we just won't be able to do anything in there. It'll just be a, a natural area. Okay. And it's within the floodplain, and I don't think we really want to do anything in that area anyway. Yeah. Okay. I, I, Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Brown, I, I, I found this fascinating reading. We, on the county, we had done some wetland mitigation at, for the airport, I believe, at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we just I perused it and didn't spend a lot of time. I didn't have a lot of information, I, I, so I appreciate all this in my packet. I did have a couple questions, though, that uh, just for clarification. There's there is this um, period of time that's going to be the the wetlands that we we're going to be providing for will have to be um, uh, supervised not supervised uh, tested on occasion mm -hmm. uh, etc. Who does that? Is uh, that the responsibility of us? Somebody from Tech, uh, <clears throat> Ken Morgan has been doing our other wetland mitigation sites, mm -hmm. and he does that on a yearly basis and tells us how many acres we have and. What else we have to do if something's not working right? He'll advise us on how to uh, well, cure the problem. But yeah, yeah, because it was pretty the, pretty clear that I mean, if we don't fulfill like seventy percent of grasses planted and sixty percent of trees planted, that, it's, that we have to we have to fix that. And I, I was just curious who who did all the <laughs> who did all the checking because I sure what, you know, I, I just didn't know. We have to. We're actually required to do three and a half acres. So the five acres is just a little buffer. So if some of it doesn't actually turn into wetland, we'll still have a little extra. So yeah, I noticed that in the reading. We'll have this, what we're doing. We're a little we're a little excess. So we'll yeah. probably we have we're bank we've banked some land mm -hmm. in for future future if this comes up in the future, I guess. Correct. Well, we no, not really. They're not oh, going to really? let us do that. No, we'd hope they would let us do that, but you have to have a project that you're wanting to use it for. Uh -huh. So this will just be for this this project. We're also using a half acre that never did turn into a wetland at Cane Creek, and they let us add this here as well. So okay. that'll okay. take care of that one. So, as well. so if we have to do wetlands mitigation again, we'll we'll have to start from the drawing board. So it, in we're another not, location, or we're yes. not banking it then. Okay. No, that's correct. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think there's a lot of stuff here, and I'm just so you can see me flipping through here. The other question I had is that it said that you know I noticed on the the deed here that it recommended that we have title insurance, and I didn't see any I didn't see any documentation that we do have title insurance. Do we have title insurance for this? Are, are we required to as a municipality? Not, 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 not as far as I'm concerned. No, we aware don't. Of, no. no. This is still part of the whole track. We're not separating this out right now. Oh, okay, now. okay. Well, I just was reading reading this stuff, and it said that it recommends title insurance. I just didn't, I didn't know if, if we did that. And uh, anytime you see a legal document, they recommend title insurance, I think. I don't know. We, we don't have title insurance. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Any questions from the audience? Comments? All right. Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, item 10, consider appointments to the Sewer Regulations Appeals Board. Sponsor is Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, we have two appointees that the council needs to uh, point to our sewer regulations appeals board this board was established by ordinance in 1998 the board is made up of five members appointed to three-year terms who shall not serve more than two full 
three-year terms without a one-year break. This board's to, it's set up to conduct any hearings and appeals that we make in our department. Uh, since the board's been established, there we have yet to have an appeal, so the board's never met. Uh, uh, Daniel Ike and uh, Martha Wells are the two uh, board members that their terms are up. We've asked Dennis George. Martha's moved out of town. She took another job up in Kentucky somewhere. She was a chemistry professor at Tennessee Tech. We've asked Dennis George if he'd be willing to serve. He's the head of the water center, and he's agreed. Daniel Ike is the owner of Dixie Imperial Plating, and he's agreed to serve another term, and we'd recommend their appointment. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions from the council? We're always grateful when people want to serve their city. And this board's never met? No. Nope. <laughs> so you sure all these people still live here? Yes, we okay. talked to them. That's a good thing. Just making sure. <laughs> I think that's great that they've never had to meet. Yeah, it's yeah. a good I mean, thing. Very nice. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Item 11. Consider awarding bid for sanitary sewer manhole rehabilitation project. Uh, sponsors, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. So, Mayor and Council, we do an annual sewer rehab project every year, which is made up of different it's the line work. I think you guys approved a recent line work we did. And this is a manhole project that we're doing. Uh, the areas you can see in your box outline on the map is the sort of the, the manholes in the area we're working on this time there's approximately about 15 or 50 manholes that'll be rehabilitated in this project uh, we've taken the bids uh, CTR coatings was a low bidder $91,400 I've got a little video probably 20 seconds to show you what they're going to do and this is a typical what we're talking about they'll do I turned the sound off where you go down and have to hear it <coughs> But they go, they go down into the manhole. They spray up. It's called a silicone modified polyurea for this method, and it basically there's a three-layer system, and it basically builds the manhole back to a new type condition. It's uh, how often do you have to do this? Some of the manholes are some of the old brick manholes, or some that were probably put in the 30s. Some of it, it just depends on the condition. Every you know, we look at them in, a, in an area when we're working in those areas and go do and do an evaluation. Some of them will have cracks. There's water intrusion getting into certain places in it, so you just try to evaluate it that way. But it's and you you can have 1930 manholes that are still great. I guess a lot of it depends on the traffic. It depends a lot on the installation, installation, the original installation and the method that's used. This isn't going to help the way they're so uneven in the pavement. So. <laughs> no. There's, there's ways to do that. We've thought about trying to come in and, like Broad Street, I think I hit one out there the other day by Mikey's house. <laughs> and there's companies that we can get in to sort of do that. It's not real expensive, and whether we may try to do that, get a list of those sometime and try to do something like that. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions, any more questions, comments? Mr. Kelly, when would, when would they do this when, once, once, the, once this gets approved? Sometime this spring, they'll start and work through probably the first of the summer. I want to come and watch. Oh, well, be glad Just let to let me you know. know. Okay. It's kind of fascinating. I'll tell you all about it. They'll probably let you go down in the manhole. <laughs> You've seen the video. Well, they haven't let me do anything <laughs> like that. Well, we've fast. got all that equipment. If you'd like to go, we can, we can accommodate you. <laughs> you got a hard hat for it. We've got all the harnesses and so forth. It, uh, you showed us all the green dots and all. Do you have a ballpark? How many, how many manholes is that? 50, approximately 50. 50? Yes, right. about 50 manholes. How many do we have in the city? 4,200, about roughly 40, approximately 4,200 manholes in the city. Wow. This will be about one, I guess that comes out to about close to 1% or so. Yeah. Wow. wow. Interesting. All right, any other questions, comments? No. Anything from the audience? See none, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. All right, that's fairly quick. This is a portion of our, <clears throat> portion of our meeting where we open up the floor uh, to citizens and or delegations. Anybody 
wants to come forward, say anything on their mind, ask questions, comments. All we do is ask to come forward, state your name, and uh, if you could hold it to three minutes, that would be great. Mr. Mayor, City Council, City Manager, my name is David Vandercook, and I have a complaint against the codes department. They are refusing to enforce the city codes. I have a neighbor who has a junk pickup truck sitting next to his house and has been for a number of years. I have complained many times to the city about this, and nothing has been done. He also has a boat parked in his front yard. Yeah, he's at 326 Essex Road. Oh, he does not live there. He, that is his house, but he lives at 315 Essex. I wish the city would do something about this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Vandercook. Thank you. you have brought that to our attention, correct? Yes, I've been to the Coast Department many times. They originally had two cars, they moved one out finally, but which was very looking of the two that were there. There was an old Chevy pickup that's full of rust. Okay. Okay. What's what's our procedure when we when well, we ask I'm I'm sure they've been out there several times. I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but we'll check on it tomorrow. Okay. If you want to check back with us. Okay. Uh, give us you know, sometime tomorrow afternoon or Monday, check back with us. So we can find out exactly what all is taking place. Uh, anyone else? All right. Anything from the from the council, Mr. Mayor? I, the weather has been so nice when when it hasn't been raining. But uh, I happen to walk in Dogwood Park about six times a week, and it is very gratifying to me that every time I'm in that park, I see people in it walking in it, you know, ha strolling their children. And um, it's just great to have that in the middle of our city and such a beautiful addition. And um, every every single time I go, I'm just uh, filled with pride with uh, what the city of Cookville does for the citizens of this area and for the citizens of Cookville. And um, I just always like to express something good about that because that's really wonderful. Thank you. Anything else? I wanted to point out a, a study that came out recently. Uh, it's the Council for Community and Economic Research. Uh, it's the Cost of Living Index. Uh, and this is something to brag about, so I want everybody to pass the word. Uh, you can quote us on that one, Amy. Um, <laughs> The, uh, this is 314 urban areas in the U.S., uh, and the national average uh, for cost of living in it is based on six different components, uh, housing, utilities, grocery, grocery items, transportation, health care, and miscellaneous goods and services. Um, out of Tennessee, there were about 11 or 12 cities that were in this study, uh, but 314 across the country. Uh, and I would like to point out that Cookville, Tennessee was ranked the sixth least expensive place to live out of 314 in this study. Now, I would like to say we were number one in Tennessee, but actually we were a tenth of a point behind Memphis. Uh, they are the fifth least expensive. Uh, so second in Tennessee, but sixth nationwide of the 314 urban areas. Uh, the most expensive was New York, uh, Honolulu, San Francisco, kind of the, kind of the ones you would imagine. I'd rather live in Cookville than Memphis. <laughs> mm, well, I probably would too. Me too. No, not probably. I would. But anyway, uh, just wanted to point that out. That's something to brag about. Um, I think that's pretty amazing. I know. I think several years ago we got we maybe USA Today did a study and we were the most affordable city, uh, and we're I, I guess we have some consistency there. So that's something to brag that's, about. That is something to brag about. That's great. Anything else? All right. This meeting is adjourned.